Welcome everyone to the first TDL member forum of 2023. Happy New Year to everybody. My name is Christy Park and I'm the executive director of the Texas Digital Library. I'm so glad you joined us today. Uh, as we gather in this shared virtual space, we'll start as we normally do by acknowledging the physical places from which we are all joining, all located on the indigenous lands of Turtle Island, the ancestral name for what is now called North America. Our staff at TDL work remotely, and we're all joining from our own specific places in Texas and elsewhere, but I join from Austin in the Central Texas area where the Tonkawa were among the traditional stewards of the land before their forcible removal. I invite you to share your own land acknowledgements in chat if you'd like to, and we'll post a link there where you can learn more about the colonization lands of indigenous people in your area. Here's our agenda. Uh, we'll follow the usual pattern. I'll, I'll start with some updates and then we'll report out on services and projects and some community updates and then hopefully have time for questions at the end. You'll be hearing primarily from me and our Deputy Director Courtney Muma, DPLA uh, Coordinator Elliot Williams, and our Communications Manager Leah DeForest. So let's get started. <clears throat> First off, um, I am delighted to introduce you to TDL's newest staff member, Megan Hernandez, who joined us in early December as administrative associate. Megan, could you unmute for a second to say hello so folks can see your face? Hi, everyone. I'm Megan, and I'm super happy to be here. <laughs> We're so excited to have you, Megan. Megan brings a wealth of higher education experience to this role. She's even familiar with Vireo, our ETD management software, uh, after working with the degree audit team in the graduate college at Texas State University in one of her previous roles. She is, as I said, she started in December, just before the break, but she's already helping us with uh, TCDL planning, billing and travel, scheduling meetings, updating our website, to name just a few things. Um, we are excited for you to get to know her, and we've published an interview uh, with Megan on our blog. We'll post a link to that in chat. If you need to reach Megan, you can email her at megan.hernandez at austin.utexas.edu. We'll put that in chat. And you can reach her in TDL's community Slack. Her handle there is uh, conveniently at Megan Hernandez. So welcome, Megan. We're really excited to have you. All right. Our... Uh, our staff is not the only thing that's growing. I'm really pleased to... Uh, let you know. Uh, other areas of our consortial work are growing as well. Last fall and continuing into this new year, we have been kept busy by all of you, which we love, of course. Um, our members and, and some new partners have continued to add new services to their membership, and so I just wanted to kind of let everybody know about some of these areas of growth. Elliot Williams has been working with a number of new members to aggregate their digital collections to the Digital Public Library of America. I think we mentioned in a previous forum that we added UT San Antonio's collections last fall, and this month we're adding 30,000 plus records from Southern Methodist University and UT Southwestern Medical Center's collections. So that those collections will be discoverable via DPLA alongside the 47 million other items aggregated from across the US. So that's pretty exciting. And um, you'll see a blog post about these new member collections on our website later this month, once they're discoverable in DPLA. Additionally, UT Southwestern has added the Texas Data Repository service in order to provide their researchers with a platform for data sharing to meet the requirements of the new NIH data sharing policy. We're also working with the Texas Disaster Information Systems, or TDIS, project to become a TDR affiliate member. TDIS is a multi-institutional collaboration that's developing data collections and analysis systems 
to support disaster resilience efforts for the state of Texas. And the Texas Advanced Computing Center is a key partner on that project. So we're contracting with TAC to provide space and TDR for data publication and sharing and excited about um, this new partner. And then finally, our institutional repository hosting service is growing um, using DSpace. We're finalizing a contract with Tarrant County College, which is one of our current members, to launch a brand new repository for them. And we're working with Texas State University to migrate their self-hosted DSpace repository to TDL infrastructure. So this is all really exciting. We love... Um, working with new folks and some of some familiar folks in new ways and we're not done growing i i expect to have more announcements in the coming months as as we continue to talk with folks and continue to grow and strengthen the tdl shared infrastructure and in support of open access so next up kind of going from local or state level to national level i wanted to provide some updates on uh, recent federal government actions around promoting open access to the results of federally funded research. We've talked previously about the OSTP's uh, public access memorandum from a few months back, um, informally known as the Nelson Memo. That memo charges all federal agencies with developing or updating their public access policies in the coming year. Additionally, as I mentioned on the previous slide, the um, NIH, uh, their final policy on data management and sharing goes into effect this month on January 25th. And that policy expects researchers to develop a data management and sharing plan and to maximize appropriate sharing of scientific data. It also empowers researchers to do this in the best way possible for them and using repositories of their choice within certain guidelines for appropriate repositories. So the Texas Data Repository is a choice for researchers for this, um, for institutions that are subscribed to that service. So that's kind of old news in a way. There's some new news as well that I wanted to um, highlight. Last week, the Office of Science and Technology Policy announced a series of new actions to advance open and equitable research, including the designation of 2023 as the year of open science. So the year of open science, according to their announcement, will feature actions across the federal government throughout the year to advance national open science policy, provide access to the results of the nation's taxpayer-supported research, accelerate discovery and innovation, promote public trust, and drive more equitable outcomes. Alongside this announcement, the government also launched a new online resource at open.science.gov, where the public can learn about emerging open science initiatives, funding opportunities, and programs across the federal government. Um, so I just want to make sure everyone's aware of these resources if you weren't aware of them previously and uh, kind of highlight and keep our community up to date about what has been a very active and busy six to nine months at the federal level uh, in support of open access and open science. It's exciting to see and we're staying connected to these activities um, in a number of ways, including through our participation in the in Spark, which um, does a lot of advocacy and and tracking um, in this area. So more on that as we know more. So finally, um, before we move into services and projects updates, I want to talk a little bit about uh, the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries, which um, after three years of virtual conferences will be back in person in 2023, which we're really excited about. We're really excited to welcome all of you back to Austin, May 16th through 19th. The conference is open to anybody who works in, uses, promotes digital scholarship and digital collections and digital libraries broadly. Uh, we hope that everyone who presents at and attends TCDL will benefit from an opportunity to learn about each other's work and find ways to communally acknowledge and validate our collective experience working in libraries and archives. 
The call for proposals is open now through February 27th, and I invite you to review that and think about submitting a proposal in one or more of the categories the committee has outlined. Speaking of which, the um, planning committee will be hosting uh, on January 25th an information session where you can meet the folks organizing the conference and ask questions, learn about the session types, um, brainstorm ideas for presentations. You might even find some collaborators while you're there. I invite you to think about coming with some ideas to workshop um, at, that, at that event and uh, working on your proposals. We're sharing links to both the call for proposals and that info session where you can learn more and register. Uh, concurrent with planning the conference, the TDL Awards subcommittee of the conference committee is currently inviting nominations for TDL awards. Um, those That nomination period is open through March 3rd. We love hearing about and having the opportunity to recognize the important and difficult and special work that folks in our community are doing. And I highly encourage everyone to just spend a little time thinking about who you know that's doing outstanding work and deserves a little recognition from our community, including yourself um, and the work that you're doing. Um, anybody who contributes to digital scholarship or the preservation, management, or access of digital content is eligible. Nominees can serve in any position within their organization. Affiliation with a TDL member institution is not a requirement for either nominees or nominations. So no excuses. <laughs> um, we hope you'll, you'll submit uh, a nomination. Award winners receive free registration to TCDL and special recognition at our uh, award ceremony during the opening plenary of TCDL. We'll, as usual, post some links in chat where you can read about the awards and, and our previous winners and, and find out how to submit a nomination for yourself or a colleague. And finally, here are the folks who are doing all this work to um, prepare for and make our conference a reality. These are the uh, TCDL planning committee members led by Christina Kellum and Diane Lopez as chair and vice chair. The committee is composed of 19 members from 12 institutions and some TDL staff. And they're coordinating among various subcommittees to tackle different aspects of the conference. The committee members have been meeting since September to develop goals related to diversity, equity, inclusion, and accessibility for every part of the conference. They've created the call for proposals, the awards nominations, and invited a keynote speaker. And they've secured room blocks at nearby hotels, decided space and technology needs for the conference site. All of this work and, and more to come um, is going into making this conference happen for our community. And I'm really grateful to everybody on the committee for, for that work that they're doing on our behalf. We're having to exercise some muscles we haven't worked in a while um, to plan an in-person conference after several years away from it. It's really fun to see it happen. Um, I hope you'll take a moment to get to know all of these folks by taking a look at our blog post that introduces them and tells you a little bit about them and by saying hello to them when you meet them at TCDL in May. All right, now we're gonna move into services and project updates. I've got a couple and then I'm gonna hand it over to Courtney. So first up, DSpace. Um, our DSpace 7 Upgrades Task Force continues to test DSpace version seven and plan for upgrades of all of our hosted repositories. Those upgrades currently are scheduled for summer of 2023. Um, we've got a wiki page where you can uh, kind of stay connected to and abreast of the work that they're doing. 
We also have a new chair of our DSpace user group as of January 1st. Alexa Height from AM Corpus Christi has assumed that position from Charity Stokes, who concluded her term in December. Many thanks to both Alexa and Charity for their willingness to lead this group for our community. Um, our next DSpace user group meeting is scheduled for January 24th. And Shelly Barba from Texas Tech will be subbing as our meeting facilitator for that meeting. We're going to be discussing preprints in the repository, a hot topic, as well as planning for TCDL. So hope um, folks will join us if you're interested. And moving on to OJS or Open Access Journal Hosting, uh, we also have a new chair of that group, Susan Elkins from Sam Houston State University. Susan is a veteran OJS user and a manager of a number of hosted journals at Sam Houston State. We're so grateful to her for stepping into this role and also to Justin White from UT Rio Grande Valley, who concluded his term of, as chair at the end of 2022. Our next meeting of the OJS user group will be held Thursday, February 2nd at 10. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Courtney to continue our service updates. Howdy, folks. Uh, Courtney Muma, Deputy Director of TDL. My pronouns are she, her. Um, I'm going to start with Vireo updates. Um, our Vireo 4 migrations continue. We tried darn hard to get them all done before December. Um, and Frank has been just working and working. Um, but of course, there are always issues that come up. Um, so Frank is continuing on that. He's got four remaining migrations that we hope to complete by the end of January. Um, we've also begun to share out our plans for Vireo 3 instance deprecations with Vireo members for whom Vireo 4 is now live and in production. And so you'll start seeing that soon. Um, also a reminder, um, the Austin company Nobility completed their accessibility assessment for Vireo 4, and we look forward to sharing those results with the Vireo community in the coming year. Um, honestly, overall, there were far fewer accessibility issues than we'd expected in Vireo 4, and we hope we can address them during an upcoming spring community development sprint. Um, more on that later once we have the dates ironed out. Um, next up, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the Texas Data Repository and Dataverse. Our TDL systems administrator, um, the fabulous Nick Lawland, who many of you know from the help desk, um, is currently upgrading our TDR Dataverse to the um, most current stable release from the Harvard Dataverse developers. Um, TDL is also going to add some new features, including embargo, brand new file viewers, direct upload and download capabilities, GitHub and Dropbox integration functionality, and a tool called DV Web Loader, which offers a GUI version of the DV Uploader tool that we developed um, with our contracted developer about two years ago. And that tool allows for researchers to navigate basically to a folder of items on their own machine and add a whole folder via a self-installed simple user interface that is a web-based application. Um, we'll have all that documentation coming soon and I'll share, um, well, Leah will share <laughs> in the chat a link to the training Dataverse so that you can preview those um, upcoming upgrades. So we've got it on the current version now and we're especially excited about Embargo. So for those of you who are curious about TDR or who are already members, um, you can go to the training Dataverse to see what's coming in the new production upgrade that we intend to have applied to the production version of the TDR within the next couple of weeks. And with that, um, <clears throat> we're going to move on to Leah talking about OER. Thanks, Courtney. Hi, everyone. This is Leah DeForest. I use she, her pronouns and I'm TDL's communications manager and OER support service lead. And I'm so glad to see you all here today. Happy New Year. So um, first up, in honor of all of the color-coded calendar fanatics and day planner devotees and the Bujo buffs, that's Bujo short for bullet journal, and everyone in between or who is not those things, we are inviting leaders from our OER community to share their approaches to planning OER activities for the academic year. So thank 
sharing your calendars. So following presentations from Gabby Hernandez at UTRGV and Sabrina Davis at Texas Tech, we will invite guests to share their own calendars and planning tools for mapping out the OER year. We'll also reserve ample time for Q&A at an open forum, and that can be about the presentations or any other OER related topics. Registration is free and open to anyone, including and especially anyone working on your campuses that you'd like to attend. I hope we'll see you all on Wednesday, March 22nd from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Second, I just want to um, re-up some reminders here about uh, some resources for you. Uh, you may have seen the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board announced the 2023 grant cycle for OER grants last week. That announcement went out in the Texas Higher Ed OER Google Group. And I just want to invite everyone here who is interested in coordinating work for grant funding or would like to co-work on grant proposals or just ask any questions of each other to utilize our platforms and resources to collaborate. So we have a, an OER focused listserv um, that you can join and email. We have a channel devoted to OER discussions on our community Slack. And additionally, we run that statewide Texas OER Google group and all three platforms are free and really informal, easy ways to ask questions and collaborate. So we're going to share all these links to those resources in chat, but also feel free to email me if you have any questions. And then next we're going to move into our community updates and Elliot will get us started. Hey everyone, my name is Elliot Williams. I use he, him pronouns and I'm TDL's DPLA Metadata Aggregation Service Coordinator. Um, and I'm very excited to announce that TDL is hosting another edition of the Digital Collections Lovin' next month, um, coinciding with Valentine's Day and International Love Data Week. Um, like the previous Lovin' events, this will be a chance to show off your favorite digital collections and digital exhibits, um, and to celebrate all the care and effort and energy that goes into making digital materials available. Um, inspired by the Love Data Week theme of Data Agent of Change, um, for this Lovin', we're hoping to particularly highlight projects that center metadata equity and community collaboration. Um, I'm super, super looking forward to this event and looking forward to learning about more awesome digital projects with you all. The Love In will be held on Wednesday, February 15th from 1 to 2.30 p.m. Everyone is welcome, um, so please join us for what should be a really fun event and feel free to share the event information with others at your library who might be interested. And now I'm going to hand it back to Leah. Right on. Thanks, Elliot. So we have a couple events coming up real soon next week that I'd like to share with you. One is, um, as Christy mentioned above, the TCDL Planning Committee is excited to bring everyone together to talk about your ideas for your TCDL proposals. So if you're not sure which TCDL presentation type best suits your topic or you want to brainstorm ideas or run stuff by each other, um, the conference committee will be there, I will be there, and I hope you will attend our proposal information session next Wednesday. So this is where conference committee members will be there to talk about the theme and different presentation types and have a look at the overall conference schedule. And we'll allow lots and lots of time for open forum and questions um, for you to chat with us and each other. You can also show up and just use that hour to just write your proposal. You can connect with other co-presenters there and um, get ideas on how you can collaborate. And this will just be in a very informal and fun setting. Hope to see you there. Also next Thursday, our Research Integrity Interest Group presents Dr. Cynthia Warner from Texas A&M University. Dr. Warner will present to us on identifying and reducing potential sources of bias in the promotion and tenure review of university faculty. So this touches a lot of areas, not just in research support, but other areas that might be of interest in scholarly communications, et cetera. So this presentation will identify many different ways that bias can enter into the promotion and tenure review process, whether it's bias from external review letters, student evaluations of teaching, or the metrics used to evaluate scholarly productivity. We're gonna share links in chat where you can learn more. And I do hope we'll see you at all of our events coming up next week. So as usual, we have tons of stuff coming up. And so, um, <laughs> Just want to reiterate, lots of things coming up um, next week. We also have a digital preservation interest group meeting tomorrow that meets quarterly. So if you haven't caught one, this will be a good time for you to show up. Um, we um, these, these meetings are open to anyone. So your campus partners and any non-TDL member colleagues in your network, please open these up and welcome everyone to join us. 
I want to note that the GIS interest group will reconvene in February, so no meeting this month. Um, and I hope I'm right on that, Kate. I saw that you were here. Also, congratulations to Kate McNally Carter, who's the new chair, and Cynthia Henry, who's the new vice chair of that group. That's it for me. I'll hand things back to Christy now. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Leah. Thanks, Elliot and Courtney for those updates. Um, a lot of exciting stuff going on. We have three minutes left in our half hour. Um, so if you have a question or an announcement or a comment, please um, feel free to unmute yourself or um, or type it in chat. We'll be happy to try to answer it. I'm noting that <clears throat> Kate, oh, I'm noting in the chat that Kate met, uh, has corrected us. We're the GIS interest group meet is meeting in January on the 27th. So we'll make sure that's on the calendar on the website. John Crosno also asked about um, TCDL registration and Leah answered him in chat, but I thought maybe we should amplify that. Um, hoping to have that open in February, right Leah? That is right. We are, um, so as Christy mentioned, we're exercising some muscles on how do we um, set a fee that's appropriate for this conference that um, we feel like will be affordable and, and equitable for everyone. So we're working on that. And once we land on that fee, we're going to be ready to open registration. Yep. If you uh, feel free to, we still have a, another minute for you to get questions in, but um, if you have a question or a suggestion outside of this meeting that you want to ask us, um, you can always get in contact with any one of us to ask it. We're easy to find, but we also have this uh, suggestion box um, that we have a, a link to here on the screen. Um, that you can use to ask a question anonymously or make or provide feedback anonymously. And um, if you'd like to take advantage of that, we encourage you to do that. If it's something that you'd like to see addressed in this forum or, or somewhere else, um, we'll be we'll we'll do that um, as well. Christy, can I just point out too, and, and thanks for asking this um, question, Elizabeth, but if you're ever wondering like, where's a great way to just see all the upcoming events um, and find links to register and what have you, if you look at our events calendar on tdl.org, I'll, I'll drop a link in there, but we also have a, um, we call it the what's happening blog post. And so we have those come out monthly. Usually they're published a day or two before the forum starts so that we try to be up to date for the upcoming month. And I'll drop links in there where you can find um, ways to access. Awesome. Thanks, Leah. All right. Well, I think we'll wrap it um, there. Thank you, everybody, for attending. Uh, it's good to be with you again in the new year. Um, we're excited to work with you to make 2023 great for TDL and for all of us. Um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Everybody take care. <laughs>